Janet, the, the state of play for inflation right now is one where everybody has to remain cautious. But I wonder why traders and investors don't seem to be phased at all about the threat that inflation could possibly pose in the coming months. Hi, Dominic. Uh, thanks for having me. I think there are several reasons. First of all, I think we got the confirmation that inflation is actually OK, is still heading in the right direction. I think there is risk of a reacceleration, but as long as we are not talking about huge acceleration or shock, I think that's fine. I think there are reasons why we are still optimistic that inflation will slow down. I think if you look at the rental market, you know, their leading indicators uh, like Zillow index has suggested, well, and that's the biggest component of CPI. And uh, you got a cooling labor market, uh, wage growth is slowing down nicely. Um, and the Fed's preferred measure, you know, core PC is, is slowing nicely. So I think you know, the markets are still uh, in general expecting, you know, over six to 12 months time, uh, inflation will be heading uh, toward the two. And also, I, I would say that historically, if we are staying in the range of two to three ish percentage point of inflation, it's actually a sweet spot for equities. So I think it, as long as we don't get a big shock in inflation, I think markets are, are kind of OK with that. If it's a sweet spot for equities, what then takes us out of that sweet spot? What would have to happen? Because there are not signs yet that anything on either end of the risk spectrum, either on the growth acceleration side or the recession side, seem to be anything close to playing out right now. Well, I think in terms of the U.S. labor market, we are actually seeing more and more of a Goldilocks scenario playing out. Of course, there are risks to that, but uh, the latest data suggests to us that uh, thanks to immigration, we've got actually increase in labor supply and wage growth is slowing down. And that tends to lead to uh, eventually slower services inflation, which everybody is uh, concerned about. Um, and, you know, job openings are falling. And at the same time, you actually didn't get a significant spike in the unemployment rate. So I think overall speaking, it, it tells you that we are kind of in that sweet spot environment, at least for now. And overall speaking, uh, I think the markets are worried about a sh like a sizable reacceleration that would be very bad. I, I would agree to the markets. Um, but I think if we if we don't see, say, 2 percent inflation uh, very quickly, I think that's fine. As long as we are heading roughly in the right direction, uh, I think markets can keep on rallying. And finally, Janet, if, if those assumptions that you've laid out are all going to come to fruition hypothetically how does then mm -hmm. one position the portfolio is it is it tilted more still towards equities is there attractiveness right now within certain parts of the rates and credit space and how, how exactly do you balance all that out yeah i gotta say we of course we look at the risk scenario and we have hedges in the portfolio that would protect us against say an inflation shock and we think that an inflation shock in the near term would very likely uh, be attributable to uh, oil prices due to geopolitical risk. So we have long global energy stock opposition. And if we see inflation accelerating and you know, uh, worries on the rates and things like that, and if we do see uh, more economic slowdown and recession, we also think that uh, the high yield space is actually quite vulnerable because high yield spreads are uh, at very tight levels, uh, if you ver uh, measure it versus its average or one standard deviation. So we actually have a uh, short position in the high yield spread component because we think in that scenario the high yield spreads would would probably rise quite significantly.